As we previously discussed, children with type 1 SMA never sit. Children with type 2 SMA never walk independently. However, children with type 3 and type 4 SMA achieve independent ambulation. They are able to walk without assistance, at least for some time in their lives. Children with type 3 SMA are oftentimes arbitrarily categorized as having type 3A or type 3B SMA. In children with type 3A SMA, there are usually symptoms present of weakness or decreased endurance before the age of three. And typically, the child with type 3B is perfectly normal for the first three years of life. Is it important to make this distinction? Perhaps, in that prolonged independent ambulation for years or even decades is far more common if a child is asymptomatic until the age of three. The variability of clinical presentation and disease progression in children with type 3 SMA and young or midlife adults with type 4 SMA makes a one treatment plan fits all impossible. And I believe that this group of patients is best handled through a physician knowledgeable about neuromuscular diseases in general and SMA in particular. From that team medical captain, there may be the needs for individual consultation with some of the specialists that we've mentioned in the type 1 and type 2 children, a pulmonist, a physical therapist, a nutritionist, an orthopedist. But again, I think these are decisions which need to be made on a case-by-case -case basis. As with all aspects of SMA, the later the onset of symptoms, the more benign the long-term prognosis tends to be. We fully expect that our patients with type 3 and type 4 SMA will live a normal lifespan. And it's our job as healthcare professionals to ensure that longevity is accompanied by productivity and a full involvement with life and all it has to offer. The SMA type 3 and type 4 patients are probably going to provide critical information as to the mechanisms of SMA and may provide clues as to treatment interventions. And it's possible that a better understanding of the type 3 and the type 4 patient, understanding why their disease is so much more benign than the type 1 and type 2 patient, may provide additional windows of insight into future therapeutic strategies. There is information contained on this website regarding our hopes for the future, the scientific breakthroughs which have led to a tremendously augmented understanding as to why SMA happens in the first place and how we might be able someday to intervene with meaningful therapeutic treatments, how we can support each other through parent meetings, through the annual meetings of the uh, Fight SMA Association held every year in Washington, D.C., and how we can share this information through patient registries to ensure that we do win the battle against SMA. I thank you for your attention, and I do invite you to spend some more time perusing other aspects of this website and to become as familiar and fluent with the information contained as possible.